Now that we have a majority in the House of Representatives, uh, how, how do you see things going in the next, uh, in the following few months? Well, we still have uh, work to do. We want to make sure that uh, when we bring up the genocide resolution uh, for a vote both in committee and on the floor, we want to make sure that we can win. Um, we have almost a majority in the committee. We don't have a majority of co-sponsors in the committee. We now have uh, a bare majority in the House that is signed on the resolution. We'd like to expand that. We'd like to get uh, some uh, measure of comfort both in the committee and on the House floor. When this gets scheduled, uh, what you're going to see is uh, all of the efforts of the Turkish lobby uh, doubled, redoubled, quadrupled. Uh, and what that will mean is that there, may, there uh, will be a major push to get people to uh, peel off the resolution, uh, to find some rationale for why they were co-sponsored but don't have to vote for it. Uh, there'll be an effort to, in committee we have to anticipate to amend the resolution in a way that Turkey wants, uh, to turn it into a uh, resolution forming a commission, which is sort of the Turkish party line. Um, and, uh, and that will give some people who are co-sponsors, if they want to take it, you know, a uh, excuse. Well, I thought that given the controversy over it, that maybe we'd be better off studying the events rather than declaring whatever. So we have to, you know, make sure that uh, that strength is uh, going to uh, persist uh, in the wake of the onslaught that we can expect. Um, so that's what we're working on now. We want to beef up those numbers even more. Um, it also helps us uh, make the case uh, with the leadership that you know it's it, that we're ready. Let's bring it up, um, and that's what we're focused on. Uh, you uh, you mentioned the opposition, and we've been talking about the, uh, the lobby, the Turkish lobby, and uh, different uh, U.S.-based groups and several names uh, of former congressmen uh, making millions out of uh, campaigning against the resolution. Uh, can you make a comparison of how things were in terms of the Turkish lobby uh, previously and uh, this year? Uh, yes, um, they are far more intense this year than ever before. And I think it's because we have a new leadership in the House. The old leadership, Dennis Hastert, the former speaker, he was opposed he had promised to bring up the resolution and then reneged on that promise. Uh, and I think the Turkish uh, lobby felt safe under his speakership that it would never be brought up. Um, they still lobbied against it. I had amendments that I could offer to committee that the speaker couldn't stop. I had amendments I offered on the House floor that the, that the speaker couldn't stop a vote from taking place on the floor. He was able to kill it in conference committee. Uh, and so still the Turkish lobby was active and they were spending millions on Livingston and others, Stephen Solars on the Democratic side, Bob Livingston on the Republican side. But now the campaign is far more intense because what, the, what I think both sides of this fight realize is this is the key year. What gets done this year is likely to be repeated every year. If we succeed in recognizing the Armenian genocide this year, We'll succeed next year and the year after. It will become a matter of fact uh, in terms of this. Every year it's brought up and every year it passes. Um, if we fail this year, then all bets are off about whether we're going to succeed next year or the year after. Once the precedent is set, it's very hard to change. So I think all sides realize this is crunch time. And uh, it's okay. a lot also relies on uh, Speaker Pelosi. Uh, how do, do you assess the chances of uh, her, uh, her decision? And what do you think uh, the community in general and uh, congressmen can do to contribute to a positive mm -hmm. approach by the Speaker? Uh, you know, I, I've had a number of meetings uh, with the Speaker on this, and I try to be careful that I don't speak for her. She speaks for herself. Uh, but she's always been very supportive of the genocide resolution, and that, and that support, I think, uh, is... Uh, continues. So I'm optimistic. Um, I, I don't have a date to give you and I can't promise anything 100%, but I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, we're still working to um, show that the strength is there and that it will withstand the pressure when this is scheduled for a vote. Um, but uh, I think our leadership, you know, certainly recognizes the facts of the Armenian genocide. They're getting a strong push from, from Turkey and from all the people that Turkey's hired and others, you know, raining down on the leadership saying the world's going to come to an end if we recognize the murder of a million and a half people at the beginning of the last century. 
Uh, but I think the, the leadership will withstand that pressure. What can the, the community around the country do? Um, you know, it can, it can contact all of the members of our leadership and thank them for their support of the genocide resolution, urge them to take it up for a vote soon. Uh, and, you know, I think that kind of a positive message is really the best message uh, because leadership has always been supportive. We want to count on leadership to continue to be supportive. Um, but, we, you know, it's important for them to hear from the proponents because they're certainly hearing from the opponents. And, I mean, uh, uh, regarding uh, the genocide resolution, why is it relevant? Why is it important for the United States to recognize a crime that took place in a, in a totally different part of the world more than 90 years ago? Well, I, I think there are two reasons. Uh, the first, uh, Elie Wiesel, a Holocaust survivor, I think described the best when he said that the denial of genocide is the final act of genocide. And in that sense, the Armenian genocide continues. There are still survivors left, and there are plenty of families of survivors. And while this denial goes on, it's really the final chapter of this genocide. Uh, there is a, a victimization that continues to go on with the denial. And I think there's a moral obligation to set the record straight, uh, not deny the loss, the pain, the grief that tremendous numbers of people have suffered uh, because of this tragedy. Um, the second reason is I think it undermines our credibility uh, in America on some of the pivotal issues of the day, on issues like the genocide going on in Darfur. How do we stand up and call the world's attention to the genocide in Darfur and have the kind of moral leadership we need to bring that to an end, if we're open to the argument, well, sure, you'll recognize a genocide committed by the Sudanese government, they're weak. But when it comes to the murder of the Armenians, uh, because Turkey is strong, you won't recognize the facts. What does that, what does that say? I don't think that's a, a position of great morality. I don't think it's a position of great leadership, and I think it undermines our credibility. Uh, Congressman, my concluding question is uh, regarding the administration. Now, tens of thousands of Armenians watched your, uh, let's say, discussion with uh, uh, with, with, the sec uh, with Condoleezza Rice. Uh, where do you think the administration stands? And do you think there is uh, ultimately some intention of uh, finding some sort of resolution to this issue? Uh, at this point, I'd have to say no. I think that the administration uh, is just sort of dug its heels in to oppose uh, genocide recognition. Um, and I thought uh, Secretary Rice's answers were deeply disappointed from someone who knows better. Um, I asked her uh, whether she had any question about the facts, the historic facts. She wouldn't answer. I mean, she doesn't have a question. No one can really have a question about the historic facts. But the administration has made the decision that other administrations have made before it that the expedient thing is not to offend an ally. Um, and where they're coming from is we don't have that many allies left, and we certainly don't have many in the Muslim world. And I recognize that, and I think it's important that we maintain an alliance with Turkey. But uh, that alliance shouldn't be at the cost of speaking the truth about one of the most savage crimes of the last century.